Oh, good evening again. It's um, your guy, your host, DLG Ripping. Um, earlier I did another video recording and um, I won't fucking believe it. I have to redo this again. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pardon my language, but I really am frustrated with this. Because um, people keep sending memes, gifs and whatnot, and it's fucking up my data. And f do pardon my language, but you may have to um, understand that I'm totally quite angry. And it fucking pisses me off when I can't get a basic thing right. All due to the fact that people want to send in their stupid sims, give some mems. I'm not fucking interested, to be honest with you. All I want to do is just record this video and get it out of the way. So, um, Chelsea are in strong talks to sign of... Um, RB Leipzig and Germany international striker Timo Werner. Timo Werner. Timo Werner. Chelsea are in talks to sign RB Leipzig striker Timo Werner. The 24 year old international has been linked with Liverpool and he said he was proud of that association. Werner has scored 25 goals in the Bundesliga this season. 25 goals. That's still a lot of goals. And in 11 in 29 games for Germany. Report suggests his release clause is about fifty-four million pounds. That's all there is. It's not that much. Fifty-four million pounds. Mind you, we paid sixty for Aubameyang, and money well spent. Fuck off. Seriously, people just ah oh, don't fucking understand what I'm doing and why am I doing this for? Anyway, uh, Chelsea have signed Ajax winger Hakim Ziyech. For 37 million in February, and last month Olivier Giroud extended his contract by a year. So, Chelsea fans, um, you're delighted um, that Werner's coming to you because he's in advanced talks. If you want to have your say, then leave it in the comment section below. I'll have a conversation with you. Um, do subscribe to my channel and drive the thumbs up like button. But I should have said, please do subscribe to my channel. And um, smash the subscribe button as hard as you can, left, right and centre. So moving on in other news. Um, well, before I move on in other news, in other words, Chelsea going to sign um, Hakim Zayek and um, Timo Werner and we're standing still. Oh, we signed George Lewis. Whoopee fucking do. Oh, Arsenal, I'll get onto you in a, in a bit. Wait till I fucking get onto you lot. You cunts, you're really pissing me off at the top of the club. You're really fucking pissing me off. So moving on into other news. Um, the Premier League, yeah, it says, I've written down, Premier League team will be able to make up to five substitutions for the remainder of the season. Now, is five substitutions really necessary? It's just, it's just um, a, um, a tactical plan by management to waste time. If they're in a losing, I mean, winning situation. If they're in a losing situation, you know, then the losing management's going to ask for more time, more time with the stoppage. Yeah, they're going to ask for more stoppage time. Should I say, to make it make, make it make um, proper sense? Yeah, the losing management will make the fourth official or try to make the fourth official and add on more stoppage time onto stoppage time. So the winning management will just want to run the clock down. And that's what they do naturally. But um, five substitutions is only until the end of this season. So I guess it's um, just um, I just I, I, I guess it's just um, another way of um, slowing the game down. I don't know, but I'm going to sit on the fence on it and see how it goes. It won't happen for the new season. No way it would happen for the new season. So, um, yeah, I'm delighted by that. But I wrote, Well, I'm not delighted by that, but I'm delighted that football's back anyway, so we can't complain. So, um, moving on into other news. Hang on, let me read um, the context here. Here we go. If we can load up. Yeah, the Premier League teams will be able to make five substitutions rather than three in each match to the end of the season after clubs approved new rules. So basically, I hate to think that my club approved of this, but they probably have. And why? 
you know what? I say I sit on the fence, but I'm thinking this is kind of strange. It's a strange one for me. Teams will also be able to name nine substitutes instead of the usual seven. Football's international lawmakers gave competitions the option of <clears throat> increasing substitute, substitutes to protect player welfare on the sports where submission. The Premier League, I mean, Premier League football will return on June 17 after a three month absence, yeah, due to the pandemic crisis that's um, hit the whole world. But this, this second wave could um, come along at an imminent time because you've got too many stupid cunts, stupid, stupid cunts, selfish, ignorant, obnoxious people. Who do not give a fuck, a flying fuck about the two meter rule? Well, guess what? More deaths, and the second wave comes, and even more, more deaths of the coronavirus. You know, these same people that are protesting for George Floyd's um, death, even though it's not in the UK, it happened. It's happening in America. It's the same ones that are going to be demanding the um, NHS workers to. Um, Save their lives. No, no. Why should they? For you, for those of you that have been fined, you do not deserve help from the NHS. And that, therefore, it all relates to um, every day or well, every week, weekly sport, such as football. And that won't happen. The, the, the continuation of the season could still not happen due to the fact that you guys out in society are fucking it up for the majority. But there you go, selfish pricks. So, um, five sub rule. I mean, do we agree or disagree with it? Um, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, anyone with football knowledge around the world, do you agree with the five sub rules? Because it may, because of protecting them player welfare. Due to the sports resubmission. I mean, do you agree with it? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to smash the thumbs up live, um, sm uh, smash the thumbs up like button, and um, do remember to um, yeah, help me drive the sub subscribe button for me. The numbers are thirty five at the moment. I've got six. I've got nine hundred and sixty five subscribers left. And I want more than a hundred. And then when I get over the hundred mark, then yeah, I'm looking for thousands. And then thousands and then beyond the hundred thousands. I'm looking to do this and I'm here to stay. So um, moving on in other news. Charlie Nicholas, who's an ex-Celtic, Arsenal and Scotland international. Um, basically he has criticised um, our recruitment team. On of of um, bringing in players who are just simply not good enough to cut it for Arsenal, such as Mustafi, Socrates, Luis, Bellerin. Well, Bellerin was employed through the youth ranks. However, he is a Spanish. Um, well, he's meant to. Yeah, he's a Spanish um, right back who had. Um, he had bits to do with the Spanish national team, but he's not part of it. So, it's just another player that's not good enough. For me, Kolasinic is just not good enough for me as well. Don't think he performs as if he... He performs as if he doesn't care defensively, offensively, and when in ball possession as well. Another one who performs like he doesn't care, Granit Xhaka. He does not care at all. While he's getting a wage packet at Arsenal. You know. He's someone that we can get off the book. Another player. Mirza Ozil. Ah. Oh, I do not mention his name. I even forget to mention his name sometimes. But you know. I don't want to mention his name. 350,000 a week. Squeezing and draining the club out of. Um, millions of pounds. He's made over 7.5 million in wages. In how many years? Well. in Just in a season alone. But how many. What he's possibly made. What, 50 odd million in wages? What a waste of money. What a waste of time he is. You know, Granite Shaka, I've mentioned him earlier. He performs as if he doesn't care. He ain't mobile enough. He is no, nowhere near a number 10. He never has been a number 10 in his life. 
I mean, a number. I mean, he's never been a defensive midfielder in his life. Not even a, close to a number ten. He's a liability at the best of times, and he's only improved in performances for Arteta because God knows what he sees in him. But surely, if Arteta listens to fan, Arsenal fan channels, then he will do the right thing by Arsenal Football Club and for the best for the football team. And that's sell Shaka. Sell him. You can't keep average players like him. Mustafi, another one. <sighs> Dreadful. Over, He's on over 100,000k in wages. Just not good enough. Another one we need to get off the wage book. Get him out. Just get him out. These players will get you into trouble, Mikel Arteta. I can assure you that they're just not good enough. El Nani, how is he still an Arsenal player? Mikatarian, why is he still an Arsenal player? 200,000 a week. Another one that we can get off the wage bill. Just not good enough. You know, we've gone from world class players in the midfield and the defence, well, mainly the midfield, world class players in the midfield to what we've got now. We've got to, we've, we had Vieira, Edu, Petit, we've gone Gilberto, Silva, we've had Perez and Overmars on the wings, we had Ray Parler in the midfield there. We've had some quality midfielders. All right, we signed Lauren as a midfielder, but turned him into a top class right back. Ashley Cole, graduated from the Youth Academy, world class left back, centre half, Sol Campbell, world class at his, at his time. Top class centre half was Colotore. You know? All right, we had Sigan in there. We could afford to have a Sigan in there. But we've gone from that invincible team, the individuals in the invincible side, to what we've got now. Bear Camp, Henri. Oh, world class galore between the two of them. You don't need to say any more. I'll give anything to have a next Ian Wright. Maybe Enketia could be the next Ian Wright. We'll never know, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll find out in time with the number of games he plays. If he plays week in, week out, and he's part of Arteta's plan, then Arteta um, truly trusts him to deliver the goods. I'm not saying that he can't do it. You know, he is a goal scorer, and he's, he's shown me glimpses of what he can do when he's in the position to put the ball into the onion bag. He, his movement in the box is um, second to none and he's intelligent enough to know where he'll find the spaces to get the goals. And um, off the ball, he works harder than any striker I've seen in a long time. You know, he is the future and um, we'll, we'll talk about um, the future later on if you want. Um, as for um, what um, Charlie Nicholas said, it's as if um, Arsenal has shown a lack of ambition to bring in the better players and to challenge for the top four. He said that we haven't challenged for the we haven't been in the Champions League for what, since 2016. Charlie Nicholas, it's 2017. That's it's still three years and it's still a long time. I get your drift, and that is poor. And we're in no position to challenge for the Champions League now, and we're ninth in the league as he um, stressed out and. He pointed that key, yeah, he pointed out that we're ninth in the league. And it's a true point. We are ninth in the league. And are we getting Champions League? We're four points behind top four. I know it there's nine games to go, but look at our fixtures. It is not good reading. We've still got Leicester at home. We've got um Man City away. We've got um a tough game away to Southampton. Aston Villa away. You know, that's another tough game. Villa have got got um, their lives to fight for you know they've got something to fight for and that's a place in the Premier League Southampton away is no foregone conclusion not at all uh, Liverpool at home now they'll be aiming to finish this, um, this whole season high on a high despite them winning the league that will still be a tough game they want to they want to go out on the high and finish with as many points as possible and wins so they feel they will still have something to play for and that is a lot more than pride you know uh, and they want to want to finish professionally well. Um, oh, I look at the fixtures now. We've got 
Who else have we got? We've got Norwich to play. Mentioned, yeah, I haven't mentioned them. Got Brighton to play away. That's not going to be an easy fixture. So, you know, they keep coming. They keep coming at us hard. And we've got to learn how to... We've got to deal with it. And how many points are we going to get out of that? I dread to think. I don't want to say it, but it feels like we're not going to get many points out of them games. And, um... They're tough games. And he also talks about... Um, Charlie Nicholas also talks about the recruitment team. Pathetic they've been. Absolutely pathetic. They've let us down over the last recent years. They have let us down. And... I feel ashamed of the players that we've got. And this is part this is the recruitment team who knew they've signed. They've wasted money on thirty four million on Shaka when we could have had Kante for less four million less. Mustafi, thirty five million on him. We've like wasted money on him. You know? Waste of money. Luis, why do we pay eight million for a season a proven season clown? A world class proven season clown that he is. And, and Conte played him in the middle of a free while he was a Chelsea player. He's not a centre-half. He's more of a defensive midfielder. You can play him as a sweeper in, in the free. But as a centre-half in the back four, he's a nightmare. A complete nightmare. If he leaves his position to play a through ball or a glory ball, we get hit on the counter-attack here. Yeah? He's nowhere to be seen. The Brazil... Massacre in Brazil in the World Cup semi final summed him all up, and we go and pay for that. That is how embarrassing our football club is. That sums up the embarrassment our football club has been over the years. And Arsenal fans, I don't care if you are angry about what I'm saying. If you want to say if you agree with me or not, yeah, then please drop your com- drop your thoughts alone, drop your um, your views in my comment section alone, and let's have a conversation about it. Yeah, uh, looking at um, oh, looking at our defense again, Bellerin. He's he's no he's no good there, especially if he can't support Pepe in attack. And when he does get the ball, and when the ball does come to him, yeah, and and you want him to cross it, he's gonna look for another pass. We need a right back that can cross a ball. You know, put in a decent cross, and I would go with Suarez for the, for the Man City game. Oh, sorry, sorry, for the Man City game. That's my t- my choice. That's my personal choice. On left back, Kieran Tierney, if he's fit, he starts against Man City. No two ways about it. And, um, well, that is a promising world-class left back if we can keep him fit. And if we can match his ambition at the same time, we will be going places. But the ambition starts from the board. You know, and that's where I am angry with um, Rouse and Leahy for rejecting the offer of having David O'Leary on the boardroom because that man knows Arsenal inside and out 10 times, 20 times and plus more than you, Rouse and Leahy. You were employed as a CEO. Remember that you might know football, but do you know Arsenal? In and out and deeply as what Mr. David O'Leary knows knows him like. I don't think so. I don't bloody think so. Edu knows a bit more about the Arsenal than you do. If you talk about Buffalona, you'll win hands down. Yeah, I'll take that. You'll win hands down. But do you know the Arsenal inside and out? Uh Uh-uh. Don't be ignorant. Don't be a fool. Let someone with the knowledge and experience come into the boardroom and help you out and help us as a club. We work together. T team stands for together everybody achieves more. Remember that. That's my criticism for you, Raul. Some Arsenal fans may think I'm being harsh on you and some of them may think I'm being totally honest. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. And while you're doing that, smash the thumbs up like button, yeah? And and smash the subscribe button for me, yeah? Left, right and centre. Because I've had enough of the lack of ambition for my football club. I want the next 10 years to be a hell of a lot better than the last 10 years wasted. 
you know, wasted time and money on Shamak, Bentner, the Nilsons. <sighs> wasted time and money on um, Abu Viriziki Abu Diaby. The talent that he had, if, it if it's not his ill discipline, then it's his um, inability to stay fit. Alexander Song, ill disciplined at times, but a good footballer. Just needed to know when to pass the damn ball. And another thing with Arsenal, yeah? How pathetic we are off the ball is beyond me. If we're not pathetic off the ball, we are weak in defence. If we're not weak in defence, then we're physically weak in battles. When we do have the ball, teams get in our faces, get physical, and we crumble. And when we crumble, we go on to lose games and concede stupid goals because we're, we have been, we've been shit for the last 10 years. If that, well, 10 years, definitely we've been shit. And this is what um, Charlie Nicholas is talking about, how we've not been um, consistent. The, we've not been consistent in the challenging for the league for the last three years. We've not been in the Champions League for the last three years. But we haven't been challenging for the league since 2008, in the year that um, Eduardo broke his leg, sadly. Because if he didn't break his leg, who knows where we would have been. We we possibly could have been English Premier League champions in 2008. But there you are. Ifs, buts and maybes. And what what ifs. All right, um, Alan Smith has had his say as well. And he's he said something about Arsenal not having the um, money to um, splash out. Unlike our rivals, so we don't have the kudos to do what we need to do in the summer. And he's he's got a point. He has got a strong point. He's another former Arsenal player, ex Leicester City striker as well, and ex um, should I say ex Arsenal and ex Leicester City striker like that. <laughs> Let me word it like that. Um, right. Um, if you've got anything to say, yeah, drop it in the comments below. Anything that you disagree on or you agree, then drop it in the comments below. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a conversation. Drive the thumbs up like button more than the down. And do remember, and I mean it, do remember to subscribe to my channel. Like I said, another 965 subscribers I'm waiting for, yeah? So I want hundreds and hundreds of subscribers before Christmas. That will make my Christmas feel good. And then, if we get to the thousand mark um, someday, I look forward to doing this live stream for you. That will take it to another new level for me. And then we go on from there. This journey is going to be a journey that I can make it remarkable for you guys, yeah? You help me, I help you. You help me by subscribing, I help you by... Um, make. Yeah, I help you by coming on your channel, yeah? And um, there'll be more DLGs repping. I mean, yeah, there'll be more DLG reppings, yeah? You want more DLG reppings? On YouTube, then you know what you have to do. So help me subscribe and I can get more and I'll bring you more context for as long as I can. For as long as I'm alive. So ladies, gentlemen, or should I say ladies to the gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls. I'm done. I'm gonna end this video. Now I'm at the end of the I'm at the end of this video. And um I wish you all a good night and rest well. So peace, love and bless. From your guy, your host, DLG Repping. And like I said, I'm at the ending of this video. And I'm going to cut. Latest.